The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. Hey, this is Stevie Richards. I'm here to tell you, you don't necessarily need all this equipment to get in the best shape of your life. All you need is this, a resistance band. I'm so excited to offer the 12-week resistance band training program to you, which features an interactive PDF with full overview videos, modifications, descriptions of all the exercises, scalability, no matter what fitness level or what age you are, the PDF scales the workout to you. Also, after your instant download of the PDF, you get full direct email support right from me, as well as access to a Facebook group with an awesome interactive community. I can't wait to help you take control of your fitness journey. Just put in stevierichardsfitness.com, go to the store, and download the 12-week resistance band training program. Jabron. This is Vince Russo's The Brand. Good morning, everybody. If you're watching this show, you are a member. You are a patron of the Realm Network. This is Getting Color with Vince Russo and Big Vito. This is where we talk about the real issues, bro. This is where we talk about things that a lot of people don't want to talk about because a lot of the things we talk about are not politically correct. Uh, what we may talk about today, I think, might not be politically correct. But I have to ask the question off the bat, bro. Is it politically correct, uh, Mr. LaGrasso, uh, for you to do your show uh, half naked, bro? Well, I figured that I'd give, give the people, a, you know, I really don't ever show my bod. But, you know, I'm feeling good. I'm out here in the sun trying to take in the good vibes out here. In sunny Florida, so everything is good. I figured I'd make a lot of people jealous. Maybe they'll move here. Maybe they'll have a change of life. Maybe they'll have the courage to do what I'm doing, enjoying life. Yeah, I think it's hysterical, bro, because you know people are going to have something to say about you you doing this podcast shirtless. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. I just want you to know that, bro. Well, that's because I'm not ashamed. I take care of myself. I look good. I feel good. I mean, the people out there see it. It's not like a mirage where I was in the makeup chair for three hours. This is me sunning and funning, doing my thing. So, you know, it's just enjoying life, being, you know, having peace, being calm, uh, having some, uh, some quiet time, you know what I mean? And just being able to relax. And it does help you people, believe me. No drama, no stress, no nothing. Definitely changes your life. Hey, Vito, let me ask you this, bro. I know you, you, uh, you've you told us before, we've spoken about this before, you shave your entire body, right? Right. Well, so what do you do now? I mean, you know, no, Noelle's still back in Pennsylvania trying to sell the house before she joins you. What do you do now, bro? Like, who's shaving your back in the parts you can't get to? Um, well, it's, uh, it's something. It's a travesty. I mean, I, you know, I, I uh, cry at night because there's some hair on my back, but I got to deal with it for now. And if I go home and uh, my back is shaved, I think I'll be in trouble. Now, hey, Vito, let me ask you a question, bro, because I honestly don't know about that stuff because I never shave my body or anything else like this. Bro, if you get your, um, if you get your body waxed, does, right. the hair, does the hair not grow back? It comes back. It, you, you're pulling it out, and it comes back like six to seven weeks later. Have so you ever have you ever done that, bro? Have you ever done that? Yeah, when I didn't have access to anybody to shave my back, I used to have my back waxed. You know, just because it's not hair thick, I just don't like the feel of it on my body. So yeah. I go do it, and it's done. So that's it. So hair, hair, so hair's growing on your back now because she's not around. How's that feel, bro? Terrible. It's like, uh, like you know, from walking or there, uh, there's a strong wind. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vita, I want to have a conversation with you today. We didn't even talk about what we're going to talk about. A lot of times we do this on the fly. Okay, Vito? Right, right. This is what I want to talk about um, because, oh, man, this, you know, this just, um, 
as a longtime fan of wrestling, um, you know, and as right. a longtime fan of the WWE, just like you, Vito, you know, WWF to WWF right. to WWE. Okay, bro, longtime fan, longtime supporter. Okay, Vito, right. it, it's it's no secret, and we're not going to beat a dead horse. But um, uh, you know, bro, the the the, the ratings now. I mean, bro, I, I think Raw this week was like un, under a one I, I I mean, bro, that it was the lowest rating on Raw, the lowest rating on SmackDown. The um the the product has really creatively been bad for a long time. That's not a slight of any of the talent. I say it all the time, bro. The talent today is working just as hard as they did during the Attitude Era when Vito was working that. This isn't a talent thing, bro. This is just a really, really bad television show. Ratings continue to go out, you know, less and less draws at house shows, yada, yada, yada. Okay, Vito? Right. With all that being said, okay, bro, WWE just sold the rights to SmackDown, bro, to Fox Television um, for something in the tune of a billion, billion, billion dollars. Okay, okay bro? Right. So I was reading an article today, and I'm reading a lot of articles like this with the WWE where they're basically saying, bro, this is all about business. Like this is all about advertisers and this is all about Fox buying into the WWE brand. You know, the, the strength of the WWE social media, the strength of the name. Um, it's, it's really, it's, it's all about, you know, business and, and, and the advertising and, you know, that's what it's all about. And, and literally, this has nothing to do with the fans anymore. It, it has nothing to do with the fans. It has nothing to do whether it's a good show or a bad show. And the fact that, Fo that Fox would pay uh, in the tune of a billion dollars, bro, for SmackDown. And, and it basically, you know, from what I'm reading creatively, like Vince is going to stay status quo. Like nothing is going to change. You know, he, he's going to continue to play it the way he's playing it because from a business point of view, the WWE is probably, bro, making more money than they ever did. Of course, there's more revenue streams and, you know, going to Saudi Arabia and the WWE Network and now this deal with Fox. Okay, but still, giving them credit as a company and as a business, bro, they are perhaps making more money than they've ever made before. So right. therefore, bro, there's no need for Vince McMahon to change. He's going to continue to play it safe. The same people, no matter how much they complain about the show, they're going to continue to watch the show. So, you know, at the end of the day, bro, you know, WWE is happy. Fox is happy. But the fans are unhappy. And, and Vito, I, I equate this to, um, I, I was talking about this the other day. I equate this to, you know, any sports franchise, bro. Um, you know, right. the San Francisco Giants, when they moved from Candlestick Park, they moved to AT&T, bro. And they had a string of, you know, it was years and years and years and years in a row of sellouts, and people were going to AT&T Park because for all those years there were a candlestick park. It was a nightmare. Now they had a beautiful park in downtown San Francisco. And win, lose, or draw, bro, the fans were selling out that arena, Vito. However, right. giant management. Okay, bro, and this, this is other franchises. Somebody was telling me this about the Detroit Lions today. The Detroit Lions sell out, sell out, sell out, sell out. They, 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 they never have a competitive team, but management is always trying to put a competitive team on the field. The Giants are always trying to put a competitive team on the field. You're always trying to put a competitive team on the field. I think that's just pride bro and i think you know i mean my, my god bro look look at Derek jeter bro he just bought into the Mar marlins you know freaking you know Derek jeter wants to put a winner 
on the field. And I mean, bro, it's like, listen, I'm not a fan of the WWE anymore. I haven't been a fan for a long, long time. But I got to tell you, Vito, you know, these fans of the WWE to 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 just know like it's all about business and really the what the fans think and the quality of the show doesn't matter anymore. God, bro, if if I were a fan of the WWE, I would really be offended by that today, bro. What's your take? Well, I'm going to tell you, social media killed the business. Um, all the marketing and the way the new era of ways to make money with uh, business has killed a lot of industry, a lot of things where we knew that were pure and true. Like you said, it's a business now with commercials and ads and subscribers. And maybe it's not the product that the people want and it's not the product that the people are, are, are happy with. But the name of the game today is to make money and you know make as much money as you can. You take the UFC. They sold their product for $4 billion. And they've been in the rut, you know, McGregor. You know, Brock Lesnar, the two biggest draws. They're not fighting regularly. Where do they get the talent? The WWE, you know, the guys are working hard. I haven't watched wrestling in over a month. And it wasn't like I was missing anything. And, you know, it's fine. But those guys, they're, they're, they're humping. They're trying their best. Like you said, it's the storylines and what goes on in. And I said it all along. And I'll say it again today. And I hope somebody listens. I know Vince won't do it. Maybe he would. But if there was a, a Vince Russo return to the WWE and an Eric Bischoff on SmackDown and it was a rivalry like the NWO or there was something where you had two guys who are in the industry who have made a name for themselves going to head-to-head -head with shows and those guys had creative control of the show different product out there and you'd see something different but because it's such a controlled environment and people don't want to give up the reins and they don't care about anybody else's creativity that's where it stops because you're only dealing with one regime and one way of thinking now the way stephanie triple h shane vince they do their business you know there are, i i could tell you that maybe they don't all agree with Vince McMahon's way of thinking. They're not going to turn down a paycheck, so they get along. But if you had to have somebody's uh, creativity, you take Triple H of NXT. NXT is what it is. And I got to tell you people, if they put that on a channel, they would, they would do well, and that would be a brand to look, to look at. If you let Shane run his own thing and let him do his thing that would be a different you know a different look you know we already have stephanie and triple h on raw with their what they're doing but we're used to that we already know come big game time they put themselves in the main the main thing and the main program because they draw so it's not like the old days where you had to be on the road 365 days a year you know you had The Rock, you had Austin, you had Michaels, you had Hogan, you had Macho Man, you had this, you had that, you had the other thing. And on the other side, you had Nash, Hall, Sting, Flair, and all the rest. Those days are long gone. But if you bring the faces of the people who made the errors, that would change the face of it. Now, guys, there isn't any place else to go. You got to settle for SmackDown or Raw. Yes, there is a cult following of Ring of Honor. Yes, there is a cult following of TNA. But are they major players in the major game? The answer is no. They're second tier. You know, and WWE will reign supreme until the McMahon sell their company to somebody else. That time and that time only will you see a different product out there. I'll even give you I'll even give you something that's I'm going to shoot here on the future. Before you go there, Vito, before you go there, I hate to use that as a cliffhanger, but guys on Twitch, I got to sign out, man. 
um, because this these shows are exclusive to the Realm Network, bro. And you can sign up. You can hear the rest of the show. What Vito is about to say, just go to Russo'sBrand.com. Sign up for the Realm Network. You will get this show. You will get Disco. You will get Stevie, Ben Hameen, every single show on the network for less than a buck a week. Just go to Russo'sBrand.com, sign up. I am signing out on Twitch. I'll see everybody later. All right, Vito, go ahead, finish what you were saying. Now, guys, this is something I'm going to predict that's going to happen in the future, and I think this is going to be a moneymaker, and you're going to see it happen. I could see in the future the UFC and WWE joining forces to create the biggest money-making industry of wrestling and ufc and put a product out there cross being you know using each other's talent to come in i'm not saying to you know the guys get in there and fight or do ufc fighting but i'm saying using the personalities like you know brock lesnar making a surprise appearance at a ufc show or a ufc guy coming in and confronting brock lesnar on raw that's something people will be interested to see. What happens if there really is a confrontation where they could put together something where we have a cage and we have a ring in the same arena? Can you imagine the money and the ticket price for that thing? It would be better than $1,000 a seat. Would they make money? Yes. Would they share the wealth? They'd have to do it 50-50. But today's world... Everybody wants to be 60 40. So I don't, but I could see them direction. And like I said, people you want to see the old time wrestling and you want to see you do have a voice. Vince Russo on one team, Eric Bischoff on another team. Let them knock heads. You haven't, seen, and if you control what they want to put out there as a product, I am sure that you will be happy with what you see. And I'm not trying to give Vince a job. I'm not trying to get Eric Bischoff a job. This is my own opinion from 27 years of being in the industry and what I see from the outside and as well as being on the inside. But, I mean, that's business. And you're talking business, people. You're not talking about doing anybody a favor or getting a job. You're talking a new creative wave. Let's see if it happens. I'd like to see a WrestleMania with Vince and Eric going head-to-head. That would be interesting. It would. But- but Vito, we we know that's not going to happen no, I know. because, because I know. again, bro, it's like, I mean, Vito, he, here's what I really have a problem with, bro. I'm not naive. It's business, bro. They just got a million dollars from Fox with the show the way it is. I get it. There's there, there's people, bro, that are so used to watching wrestling. Every Monday night, they're going to watch it regardless. I get all that. I understand all that. I'm not an imbecile, bro. But I guess here's the part that I don't understand. Where's the pride, man? Like, I I just, I I, I can't, I, I swear to God, man, if I were to have a conversation with Vince McMahon tomorrow, that is the first thing I would say, bro. I get it, man. You're a you're a zillionaire. I I understand it, bro. You're a millionaire, billionaire, zillionaire, ten times over. But I never knew of the the Vince McMahon, bro, that did not want to put his best product out there. I never knew that guy, bro. Even when we started thumping WCW, we still wanted the show to be the best that it can, bro. So I can't understand, Vito, the concept of money superseding one man's pride. Yeah, but you got to remember one thing. No matter what you do in life, people, whether it's wrestling, baseball, football, basketball, what's the one thing that gets you there? Heart. Maybe he lost his heart in the business. Maybe it's not there no more. Maybe it's just concentrated on money. Maybe he sees, he has a vision of where it's going, so he's trying to make every dollar possible before he does sell out. Smart business. I hand it to him. But I see it. Maybe not everybody else sees it because I look at things differently. If I was working in an office and I had, you know, and I had, you know, um, an office job, say, at the WWE, and I had some say, you know, I'm prideful. 
I don't want to put my name on garbage. I see some of the stuff that goes out there, and it's shameful what they do. With... There are some talented guys, and the angles and the stuff they put out there, maybe they don't dig it. Maybe they don't like it. Maybe they don't think it's cool. All right, guys, we were just having some technical issues, but Big Vito was nice enough, bro, to go from poolside to inside his apartment, bro, so that we can finish up this show. Vito, I really appreciate you, bro. I know what it's like leaving that freaking poolside, that Florida weather for you, bro. I, it, it was terrible. They were, they were crying for me not to not to leave. They said, aren't you coming to volleyball? I said, just give me a couple minutes. Just give me a couple minutes. Bro, I got to tell you, man, when you were outside, I really couldn't see that freaking tan, bro. Now now I'm seeing the tan, bro. See the tan? I'm in shape. I look good. Yes, I know. I look a little too skinny. I know that already. You do. I, you do, bro. You do. But I've been eating, and I've been you know, I've been taking care of myself. But um, it's not because I'm trying to lose weight or I'm not anything. I'm just burning a lot of calories in the humidity. It's the same way it was when I lived in Florida 10 years ago. I was very lean, and I was very, very, very slim. So, I mean, you know you know what happens when you get next to Calvin Klein? It's my buddy. So we start sharing the same stuff. I share up and at my old place, so it's good, man. It's good. Very nice, bro. Very nice. All right, Vito, you started getting into something uh, where we lost you. So what were you saying before we, uh, we, well, we lost the connection? That's what I was saying. You know, it was nice for a change to see that Bruce Pritchett and uh, Mr. Conrad, okay, they were doing a podcast from what I heard. And I heard some good things where they were giving you praise instead of knocking you. And it's not enough that a lot of people do not give you enough credit or they, they look to hate on you or they look to make themselves you know look better because they want to down you. But it was a pleasant surprise to hear that they actually put you over and like they were saying good quality things about you. Now, from what I understand, there was some live streaming and there was some stuff. And guys, I haven't talked to Vince all week. This is less, and I've been busy. I have been out of the wrestling loop. This is stuff I pick up in dribs and drabs. But I got to tell you, I heard that they were, you were live streaming on a WWE network or something and they cut it off because they were mentioning your name. If you can tell me what happened, because I know you tell me everything, but I thought this was like, I thought it was great. I thought it was fabulous. And then I thought it was ridiculous because why can't they share the wealth and just do the right thing? They're going to praise you. Hey, they want to hate on you. They'll put it on TV 24-7. They're giving you some some uh, straight stuff, just like I think it was uh, the Triple H thing. That's the thing that caught my attention. You know, because you wrote the lines for Triple H. You helped The Rock. You worked with Austin. You did these things. And these guys who have been hating on – I'm not saying Conrad, but maybe Pritchard. There maybe there's some tension there. I don't know. I wasn't there. But sometimes from some of the stuff that I hear, he doesn't say nice things about you. But for a change. He was saying that, and I'm very proud of Mr. Pritchard for doing that because I think it was a great thing. I think it's good if everybody in the business can praise each other instead of knocking each other. Vince, if you can give me a little feedback on that, I would appreciate it. Well, first of all, you know, Vito, the thing, like, listen, man, I've said this all the time. Bruce was really my mentor at the WWE, bro. Bruce took me under his wing. And when I was writing the magazine, when I was editor of the magazine, bro, Bruce took me under his wings, took me on, uh, on, you know, video shoots, you know, where he produced, I remember producing Taker and stuff like that. He took me under his wing. Then when, um, Bill Watts brought me into the writing, you know, group, you know, Bruce, you know, Bruce kind of took me under his wing. He kind of mented me, bro. And then, you know, what happened was, you know, Bruce took over JJ Dillon's spot when JJ Dillon went over to WCW and I slid in Bruce's spot, but things didn't work out with Bruce in that talent relations position. And then, you know, I was in creative and, you know, I was kind of put in his spot. So it, it got it got to there got to be some rough waters there, bro. Everybody knows when I went to TNA, bro, I wanted to return the favor to Bruce um for helping me at WWE. So I got Bruce in at TNA, and then there was some issues at TNA. To make a long story short, bro, I I will always I will always like Bruce for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's no hatred there, bro. You know, bro, Bruce, uh, 
Eric Bischoff and Jim Cornette hate me, bro. They freaking hate me. And wh why they absolutely hate me, you'd have to ask them. Because the fact of the matter is, I don't hate them, bro. I don't hate them as human beings, bro. Yes, we have different wrestling philosophies. Yes, we're different people. Yes, it's difficult for us to get along. I don't hate them. Those two guys, everything they say about me comes from a place of hatred. That's not Bruce. I mean, when Bruce says stuff about me, positive or negative, it's not coming from a place of hatred. Here's the difference with Bruce. Bruce is an entertainer. And Bruce, you know, Bruce tells great stories. Bruce likes to embellish some things, as, as do I. And, you know, Bruce is really a great entertainer, and Bruce comes from a place of entertainment. There's no hatred towards Vince Russo when it comes from Bruce. Sometimes, bro, me personally, I don't think Bruce's um, memory is as accurate as he'd like to think. And, bro, Bruce was a party animal back in the day, bro. I mean, Bruce was one of those guys that went out after every show, went out with the boys, and you know, did did some things where, you know, I got to be honest, I don't think his memory is as sharp um, concerning some things as he thinks. I mean, case in point, bro, a couple of weeks ago, he, he made the statement that I wasn't at WrestleMania 14. And literally within that same show, they showed footage of me talking to Shane at WrestleMania 14. So, bro, wh where I would call a couple of other guys liars, I don't Bruce is not a liar. I, I just think Bruce's memory isn't as sharp as he thinks he was. Bro, my memory isn't as sharp as it used to be. I forget stuff. So I really think that's the difference, yeah. Vito. Guys, yeah. Yeah. What's memory, that? I'm gonna answer this and then you can continue. When you hit 35, your memory goes. Absolutely, bro. And, and, but I think Bruce really believes like everything he says is 100% accurate. He's I, I, Bruce is not a liar. He's he's not lying. There's no hatred, bro. I still talk to Bruce to this day. We still have disagreements to this day, but there isn't a hatred. Those other two guys, bro, they hate me so much. I don't know if it's professional. I don't know what it is, bro. But there literally is blatant lies, like when it comes to them. So you know that that that's the thing, bro. I get Bruce. I think Bruce gets me, bro. There was a time when when our families were close, and me and Amy, you know, used to go out with him and his wife Stephanie. He would have us over his house for barbecues, the whole nine yards. It it's never ever from a place of hatred and um you know that that's why you know up down indifferent i mean i i still consider bruce a friend i i may sit here and argue with him over a few things bro and we may debate a few things and we may see things differently and we may remember things differently but there is absolutely zero hatred involved you know the best thing of all and this is this is the truth, people. I'm not saying this to say this. I've been in the business. I have been to a lot of people's homes. Everybody knows Big Vito mean, Big Vito that. But when people got to know me, not everybody lets you into their home. I've been into many of the boys' homes. I've been around many of the boys' children. I've been invited to dinners and sit down with everybody's families. When you consider this, guys, and you look at this, I'm telling you, it is the fact that family and wrestling, that's your family. There's always differences when you're trying to strive and make that extra dollar and nonsense. But at the end of the day, if I got together with um, if I got together with Vince McMahon, I never had I've worked for that man on and off for 20 plus years. I started in 91. He remembers my family. I always had a seat. I always had a good words with him. I worked well with him. There's no animosity. There's business side to it. But if I had to sit down with him and share a meal and do something with him, I could do it. John Laurinaitis. Me and John and Joe Laurinaitis are boys. You know, 
we don't sit and have talks and like, like we used to, but we could pick up a conversation every five years. Hulk Hogan and I, I don't see Hulk all the time, but when I see him, I have a conversation with him and we're and we're friends. We could sit down and have a meal. A lot of the guys in the business, when you see them, you give a hug, how's everything? And everything is cool. It's just outside the box when everybody's trying to make that dollar, make that thing, make a hit, do something to get ahead. That's where the ruination of the business comes in. It's cutthroat. It's politics. It's all the nonsense. But when you put everybody in a room and all that stuff is outside, guys, and you got your families and your barbecue and you have a good time, everybody gets along. And I put my name on that. Because Vince might hate a bunch of guys. A lot of guys might hate Vince. But if you all got together and you all sat there for a barbecue, everybody gets along. The Warrior and Vince, what happened? They made amends when they saw each other. Hey, Bruno and Vince. I'm just using Vince McMahon as a, as as an example. I'm not picking on him. I'd say Vito LaGrasso. Yeah, a lot of guys in the beginning that Vince knows, I was tough. I was tough on a lot of guys. But how many times did I invite those guys to my house and they came and they became friends of mine? I'm still friends with them today or vice versa, because they took guys under my wing and I said, hey, do it like this. You know, Vito, you're all right. Listen, we're all here doing the same thing. So let's all be boys and always protect the boys and stick up for each other. That's the name of the game. Stick up for the boys, because you know what? At the end of the day, when the suits are here and the boys are here, what do you got? You always got the boys. Yeah. Kevin yeah. Nash made that famous statement on Nitro, you know, when he stuck up, the, you know, money and getting and having the boys and the guys working. Kevin Nash told me something. Stick up for the boys. Speak your mind because you need to speak your mind sometimes because you could be heard. Might not be the most famous statement. It might not be the best um, possible topic. A lot of people might go against you. But at the end of the day, they're going to go, yo, man, thanks for sticking up for the boys. I appreciate it. That's all you want. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, Vito, when it gets to a level of like, hate, like just pure hatred, I, I mean, I, I just think that's ridiculous. I don't feel that way. Me personally, I don't feel that way about anybody in the business. There is nobody in the business that I would not sit down and have a conversation with. I've made that clear. But I mean, bro, there are those that absolutely positively hate me and it's not personal. I mean, I never, you know, had an affair with their wives or were mean to their children or whatever. It, it, I, I, nothing I did personal, but, um, you know, whatever, whatever ideas they have in their mind of, you know, what I did on a professional level, but, you know, you know, even with that, bro, like just, just to, just to outright hate another human being. I'm just, I'm, I'm just past that stage of my life, bro. It's sad when guys who are in their fifties and they're still having fights and they challenge each other to fights and you, and, and you know, guys, nine times out of 10, the guys who challenge for fights, they ain't fighters. And the guys who say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you're not a tough guy. You're just spewing on the thing, you know, but when it comes down to it, when you come face to face, what are you going to do? Okay, I'm here. What do you got to say? Ah, uh, you know, I was just talking. No, you said you're going to kick my ass. No, you made reference to my wife. No, you made reference to my children. Now stand up and let's do something because now I'm here. Now I'm going to defend my property. Now I'm going to defend my, my wife, my kids, everybody. And that goes for anybody out there. Yeah. If somebody says things about your wife, your kids, your family, they can talk, talk, talk. When you get in front of them, now I'd like you to say it to my face. Because now you have the opportunity. You're going to get this one or this one, or you might get both. Yeah. All right, Vito. Listen, I want to let you get back in the sunlight. I know this is your day off, bro. What do you want to plug? What's going on with the Big Vito brand, bro? Well, the Big Vito brand has been doing a lot of great things. We've got a lot of good things happening. Everybody's been working hard. I want to say special thanks to all the group. Um, uh, my wife, Noelle, has been doing a fabulous job holding down the fort and doing the brand. She's really taken a lot of pride, and it has come a long way since we started this back in August. I want to thank everybody for come, coming and supporting us and showing the love. And, uh, you know, on a side note, if I didn't start this project with my wife, I know everybody says, you know, we think we got a good man, but like when she had a stroke and everything, we started this project. She really couldn't type. She couldn't talk. She couldn't do nothing. When you see it from August to today, you see the project has worked. And that's what I'm most happy about. It wasn't about making money. It wasn't about doing anything. 
You know what I mean? It was about getting my wife's health back. And for that, I am thankful because her mind is back. She's able to type again. She's able to talk. She's able to interact with people. And I'm grateful for that. You know, I'm making some moves. I'm doing some things and uh, trying to have a better life. So go to the Big Vito brand, you know, bigvito.com. Everybody check it out. I am back on getting color. This is my show. We're going to keep doing it. You know, we're doing the tapings and uh, we're going to keep it rolling, you know, and who knows? Maybe somebody will make a donation over here. There you go, bro. There you go. Well, there he is, everybody. Big Vito. I'm so happy to have him back on his show, Getting Color. And we will be back next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. I thank everybody for uh, joining us. Also, guys, check me out on Twitch. Vince Russo live on Twitch. I'll see you over there. Take care, everybody.